What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet discussion video. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff to talk about now that we're getting close to Scarlet and Violet, uh, but something that I haven't really seen other people talk about yet uh, are the Pokemon that we don't want to come back. Now, this is like a bit of a negative take, right? Obviously, we want to get excited for the game, um, but the first year of every new generation, at least for VGC, allows us to have what's known as a regional dex format. So for example, if we look at uh, Picolytics VGC 2017, uh, we can see what was used in 2017 for Picolytics. You know, Arcanine was number one in usage. I don't think it was that high, like 80%, but like this is obviously a little bit outdated because I think it's still pulling from modern showdown. Uh, you know, we have Arcanine, Tapu Koko, Kartana, Porygon 2, Garchomp, Tapu Fini, Tapu Lele, Celesteela, Snorlax, Gigalith. It was a really interesting metagame. Uh, and I think that's like my favorite part of a new generation is just figuring out that first metagame. Oh my god, Muckalola. Sorry, this is just bringing back some deep memories. I miss Muckalola so bad. It was such a cool Pokemon. Uh, a bit of a tangent here, but it had um, basically the ability receiver, which let me actually pull it up. Yeah, it had uh, Power of Alchemy, which basically was Receiver. It copies the ability of the Pokemon next to it when it faints. So I would use it with Gothitelle to extend my uh, my Perish Trap turn. So yeah, anyways, that was just a tangent. But yeah, the first year of every VGC generation uh, allows us to have really interesting metagames. Uh, like VGC 2020 was pretty interesting. VGC 2017 was obviously quite cool. Uh, and yeah, uh, what I want to... But uh, yeah, what I want to talk about are like Pokemon that I think... I don't want to see within that metagame uh, or even maybe in the game at all. Uh, and yeah, if you guys enjoy this same point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you daily VGC content, except when I don't feel like it, like yesterday, uh, which is today for me. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, obviously, if you guys you know want to comment down below what Pokemon you hope doesn't return, uh, whether through DLC or the initial batch of Pokemon, let me know. So yeah, let's start off with uh, probably my number one pick for Pokemon I don't want to return, uh, and that's Regieleki. Now, if you're unaware, Regieleki is probably one of the best competitive Pokemon ever made. Um, I think it gets weaker without Dynamax, but also it like becomes a lot more frustrating to deal with because um, its ability makes it so its offensive attack stat is multiplied by 1.5 whenever it's using an electric attack. So basically... All of its electric attacks are choice boosted. That's the best way to describe it. Like, it's like you're getting hit by choice specs Thunderbolt off of base 100 rather than, you know, just like a natural Thunderbolt, which obviously stacks with items like Life Orb, meaning that, like, Life Orb Thunderbolt is a. It's just crazy strong. So, yeah. Um, I, what honestly, that doesn't annoy me. It's not the damage output, but I think it's like the combination of the damage output with just how good of speed control it is uh it's got access to electroweb which means that at 200 base speed um this thing will like outspeed basically everything in the game except for a few scarf pokemon and even then like you have to be like over like base 100 scarf to have a shot at outspeeding this i forget what the exact number is but like the number of po the pokemon that can outspeed it with a scarf is like super limited like you have freaking Char yeah, you have like Scarf, um, Spectrier, Tapu Koko, uh, Dragapult. Like you have to be really high in the speed stat to get a shot with this. Uh, on top of that, even like Pokemon with double speed. Like if we take a look at uh, Venusaur. Let me set these guys to level 50, by the way. If we take a look at Venusaur, right? Venusaur is a Pokemon that is known for having double speed due to the ability Chlorophyll. Well, before you were able to run like a modest Venusaur to get a little bit more damage output out of it. But if you max out its stats, 132 times 2 is only 264, which isn't close enough to outspeed Regieleki at 277. You need to hit that 278. So, you know, you give it a, a timid nature and now you're 145 hitting 290. So it like limits the abilities of like, it, it limits like the the sets that you can run on like these faster Pokemon. I think Kingdra is also in that, um, that ballpark where it's like, yeah, you could run Modest, but then you're like not outspeeding it because... Even though this thing's, what, base 85 speed, which is like five more points than Venusaur, you're still not quite there. 137 times 2 uh, is, I think, 272, I believe, or 274. So you're not there. You're like just barely not there. So that's a little frustrating. 
Um, and yeah, like it's mostly the Electroweb thing, right? So like you can be playing against like an opponent that has a Regieleki and you might have like a Scarf Pokemon that's meant to outspeed the thing next to Regieleki and all of a sudden the Regieleki just goes for Electroweb and now like because of dynamic speed tiers, you're no longer faster. Um, and obviously, you know, there's a bit of preparedness you can do to face Regieleki. Uh, and honestly, if it didn't have Transistor, I wouldn't have an issue with this thing. Uh, I'm fine playing against it. I understand, you know, it's a skill issue if you like consistently lose to Regieleki and that skill is probably within the team builder. Uh, but I think that like, the limitation it has on building fast teams um like to outspeed regieleki is a bit annoying especially within like a limited dex of the first year of vgc so i prefer that this thing get excluded at least until like the final year of vgc or like the second year when we get like dlc so regieleki probably number one on my list for things i don't want to return uh, Rillaboom's on here for one reason in particular, and that's because I like Tapu Bulu. <laughs> I'm a big Tapu Bulu guy, and I've always been of the opinion that Tapu Bulu and Rillaboom aren't actually that comparable in the roles that they fill within a team beyond being a Grassy Surge Grass type. They play much differently. Uh, but I do think that Rillaboom, having access to Fake Out, U-Turn, uh, a priority very strong Grass move uh, that, you know, gets boosted by uh, Grassy Surge, uh, and moves like Knock Off, Make it, like, really, really good, like, another Incineroar in a way. Obviously, it doesn't have, like, Intimidate. It's more like an offensive Grass-type Incineroar. That's the best way to think about it. Uh, and it's also, like, really bulky. Like, 100 HP, 90, 70 isn't that bad, especially with the Assault Vest. Uh, my main issue with this thing is Grassy Glide. I think it's fine if it lost Grassy Glide and kept Grassy Surge, which is probably what's going to happen. Um, but basically... This thing, I believe, got access to Grassy Glide and Grassy Surge within like the same span of like a month, meaning that we really haven't played in the metagame where it didn't have that priority move. Um, where it didn't have that priority move and still had its hidden ability. At least that's what I remember. I might be wrong, but uh, it wasn't that bad to play against this thing when it didn't have Grassy Glide. But even then, like, if it has Grassy Surge, it's still, like, a really good mon, right? Like, don't get me wrong. It still has all these tools it needs. But now, if you're going to be facing against, like, a... Like, if you're going to have, like, a, a Kingdra, right? If you have your Kingdra facing a Rillaboom, under Rain, the Kingdra is going to beat the Rillaboom, like, 90% of the time with, like, Life Orb Hurricane. Where the Rillaboom is not able to click, like, I don't know, Life Orb or Choice Band or even, like, just standard uh, no attack boosting uh, Grassy Glide into the Kingdra and deal, like, 70%. Like, that's my main issue with it. I think that Rillaboom has... It's, it'd be balanced if it lost access to that priority move. I think it has, like, the right amount of tools. Like, Knockoff's a little bit annoying, knowing that it gets Knockoff over, like, the other Grassy Surge Pokemon. Um, like, it just generally has better tools than it. But, like, if you combine that with an offensive presence, it, that's when it becomes a bit annoying. And you'll find that to be, like, my main issue when it comes to building uh, an annoying Pokemon. I dislike Regieleki because of how good of a support Pokemon it is while being, like, very threatening offensively. And the same goes for Rillaboom. It's a support mon that can, like, hit... It just hits crazy hard um, when it comes to, like, just being offensive. Even with, like, almost no attack investment. Like, this thing can still hit, like, a truck because it has that basically built-in life orb with Grassy Surge. Next is Porygon Z, and this one has to do mostly with the uh, mechanic that we have within the game being Terrastalization. And uh, that's because I find Porygon Z to be one of the most threatening Terrastalizing Pokemon in the game. Not only because you could slap like a Life Orb on this thing, turn into a normal type, and smack something with Tri Attack, and probably one shot like anything that isn't a ghost type, but also the fact that this thing having adaptability in a base 135 att special attack type with 90 speed means that this thing could turn into whatever type it wants and still benefit from like adaptability so so here's how it would work right instead of running try attack as your main stab option if it, what is it if a uh, terra blast is like 75 or 80 base attack uh or base power that means that you can run terra blast instead which i will replace with terrain pulse you can run like terra blast as your like normal move and then turn it into like a fire type ghost type ice type whatever and you still run terra blast as your main move and you still have adaptability that's the scary part for me uh, and really, I just don't want to have to deal with, like, Porygon Z. <laughs> We've seen, like, Porygon Z abuse um, a mechanic, like, to the ends of the Earth, to the nth degree next to Clefairy in Series 6, when it was, like, the premier Dynamax Pokemon. Um, and I'd rather not deal with that again. I think that it was, like, fine. Like, obviously, like, you'll be able to play around it. You have speed control options. You have Tailwind. Uh, but I think that having to guess the Porygon Z's Terra type 
is going to be the hardest part about playing against it because if it does end up in the game through dlc or something um that's gonna be the frustrating part because like while pokemon like um venusaur in my opinion would want to be like a ground or a fire type as they're like two terra types that they have to choose before they lock into a game Porygon z can basically be any terra type it wants and succeed and it's it might even be ghost ghost actually might be like the best one to be honest because then you become unflinchable and you have adaptability shadow ball or terra blast or whatever so yeah Porygon z would be frustrating grim snarl it's not the dual screens don't get me wrong it's 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 not the the light screen reflect it's not the light screen reflect it's the thunder wave okay uh, I, I love Grim Snarl, one of my favorite designs of Gen 6, also the scary face, scary face, annoying, uh, my favorite designs of Gen 6, but I think that giving it Thunder Wave was a little dumb, it was a little dumb, okay, so here's my, here's my thought process, yes, Grim Snarl is like one of the best support Pokemon ever made, uh, yes, it can run like a million sets, Trick Eject button was annoying as hell, right? But I think if you got rid of Thunder Wave and forced Grim Snarl players to use Scary Face or like Trick Iron Ball, then Grim Snarl would be so much less frustrating to play against. Because like, yeah, you know, the permanent speed drop is like the main draw of Thunder Wave. And yeah, it doesn't have the accuracy of Scary Face. Um, and it also doesn't affect like ground or electric types. But we do have to keep this in mind. The fact that you can Thunder Wave an opposing Pokemon and instantly slow it down like you know you let's let's go with like a kingdra again right you thunder wave like their life orb kingdra okay well that swift swim's gone um you still have to take like the life orb money water except maybe 30 percent of the time you just don't because of thunder wave uh and paralysis being like a bad mechanic i think full pair is a bad mechanic personally i think that it should just be the permanent speed drop and we're like done with it uh but that would also open the door to you know, side thunder waving your Pokemon to make it the most absurd trick room Pokemon ever while not being able to be burnt or slept. So that's, that's like the main thing, right? Uh, but yeah, I think that thunder wave is a little bit annoying. Uh, I think that if Grimstar lost access to thunder wave, yeah, sure. Let him in the game, but I don't know. That's, that's my main issue. I think that Grimstar is like one of the best prankster mods we've ever seen. It has a ton of tools. It gets fake out. It gets like literally every tool in the game. Um, it surprisingly doesn't get knockoff, but that would be like literally just the most absurd thing ever. But yeah, uh, I think Grim Snarl just shouldn't be in the game personally. <laughs> I just think that if we want to have like a fun first season um, and not have Grim Snarl be like the default, okay, I'm going to use screens and attack thing. Uh, I think that would be for the best for the game. Uh, but obviously, you know, we'll have counterplay for it. You know, people can run, I don't know, Defog if they want. Brick Break is obviously something that picked up in usage because Grim Snarl exists, but yeah, there will be counterplay. I would just prefer you weren't in the game. And my number one pick, well, I guess that was my number one pick, but like Regilecki was like number one on the list. But this one is probably the one that as much as I like joke around about people saying that Shed Engine is going to be broken, I will say this. I don't want to have to deal with it. <laughs> so here's here's the thing with Shed Ninja, right? Uh, Shed Ninja would be a prime Terra target specifically for a few things that it can do. A lot of people are saying, hey, you know, let's let's run a let's run air balloon and turn it into an electric type. And bam, Shedinja, unkillable, GG, well played. Whenever I hear that from people, I go, yeah, that's cool and all, but are you unaware of the fact that sand is one of the best uh one of the best weathers to run in VGC period? Uh yeah, like that's a thing. Um we have mold breaker Pokemon, we have attacks that just ignore abilities outright. Will-O-Wisp just annihilates your Shedinja. Uh, toxic annihilates your Shedinja. Let's say you run into that one guy at the local putting stealth rocks on a VGC team. He should leave the local, but we need to point that out that that guy does exist. Uh, we've asked him to leave, but you did face him round one, so we're going to honor that. And you lose to that because of the Shedinja, you know, not ignoring the stealth rock. Shedinja with air balloon is not what I'm concerned about. Um, what I'm concerned mostly about is the possibility of Shedinja just being like another annoying ally switch mon but now it has less weaknesses that's my main thing right if you, they could turn shedinja into like a steel type let's make it like a steel type right i guess steel mz sure um and now it has fewer weaknesses or hear me out normal type the most annoying one by the way i said steel because steel is immune to like uh sand chip damage i think steel is probably one of the best shedinja things that you could do but yeah uh normal type 
is probably going to be the most annoying because you could be a normal type you can give it safety goggles or a focus sash and now you don't deal with a lot of things and now it's an annoying ally switch pokemon because fighting moves already aren't terribly common in vgc if they terra type their shedinja into normal type and then ally switch all over you it's just going to be the most frustrating thing to play against because they could do it every single turn they could never do it once uh, it basically just is a buff to Shedinja being an annoying ally switch mon, which, you know, we all deal with it. Obviously, there's counterplay to it, but most of that counterplay is only really viable due to the fact that it's um, it's able to be one shot by support moves that are easy to slap onto a team that are super effective against it, like Rock Slide, like Snarl, like Heat Wave, like all these spread moves Shedinja is weak to. There's not going to be like a spread fighting type move that's really easy to slap onto a team uh, unless they like buff low sweep to hit both Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, I think that that's the mo most annoying thing about Shedinja possibly being introduced into the game. So yeah, uh, that's my list. Obviously, you know, I'm not I'm not going to be a negative Nelly about this entire mechanic. I, I'm actually excited to play with Terra types and Terrastalization and such. So I just wanted to point out like five Pokemon that I personally hope we don't see. Um, but even if we do see it, obviously I'm still going to play the game and not complain about it once they're in there, but, uh, I would hope that these guys don't make it in for various reasons. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, uh, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and let me know which Pokemon you don't want to be in the game, or maybe a Pokemon that you do want to be in the game in the comment section down below. But yeah, have a nice one and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.